Thank you for joining our webcast this evening. Our presenters tonight are John Cummings and Jim Laval. The topic is the Metabolic Code System. Dr. Cummings? Hi, thank you, Jennifer, for that introduction. I'm really excited to be here tonight with Jim Laval and bring to you the Metabolic Code System. Uh, some, maybe many of you, have studied the uh, Metabolic Code Triads, and you've uh, you know, dug, dug in deep to the science behind Jim Laval and his team's approach to making integrative medicine uh, more practical but a lot more effective and tonight we're talking about something that's going to make um, the overall assessment and uh, support of your patients uh, also simpler as well as it is effective or efficacious. So what we're talking about is two tools that make up a system, actually it's three tools, uh, that overcome some of the challenges that you have in integrative medicine practice. And as you all know as practitioners you've already got uh, a very you know, time-consuming job every day to give patients the information that most traditional doctors are not giving patients for them to overcome uh, that sort of uh, you know, knowledge gap between am I sick or am I healthy and seeing that there's, a, there's another path and that's am I an opt optimal wellness and um, in spite of all your efforts and Jim will talk more about this to try to educate patients they forget 80 percent of what you tell them uh, within 48 hours so uh, how do you overcome that? Well, you have limited tools to reinforce that information and you have probably limited tools to do a really great assessment that's truly integrated and functional. And so Jim and his team at Metabolic Code have come up with a really great system of really looking at the overall patient based upon a new way of interpreting markers and other uh, factors that go into a diagnosis. So that when they go home with their supplements and their information and they have to explain to their spouse or their family what's going on, why they're buying all these supplements if they're not truly sick, they actually have a tool to do that. And so the metabolic code is that, uh, is that system and it's that bridge and uh, as Jim will describe as part of the air support system that we're going to go over, the metabolic code is a systematic whole body approach to understanding the entire metabolism of a person and not just some of the markers. So it's going to answer two important questions. How far is your patient from well, optimal wellness and how is the current metabolic output that they have now going to shape their future health? So where are they going uh, from here? And so what are the most important things that they can do to recover that point that they want to get to, their, their overall perfect vitality, uh, and if they want to enhance you know, physical performance to its optimal level? Um, and part of the system is based upon the philosophy and the belief that your health is the sum of everything that's happened to you since the day you were con you conceived, and that's your, meta your metabolic code. So Jim's going to talk about how their assessment tool actually pulls together lab results, biometrics, a subjective questionnaire with self-reported survey uh, answers, uh, and their extensive rule set, you know, thousands of rules that look into not just typical lab values, but ranges uh, that are combined with a lot of uh, science and, and well-documented uh, studies to show how you factor and vector um, I'm sorry, creating a factory and vector and effect that exposes the accelerated risk and identifying all the weak links in a person's metabolism. So this is, and this is Jim's phrase, I don't want to steal his thunder, but this is the ultimate tool for the quantified self and it's going to simplify the decisions that you make as a practitioner and also give you the ability to cross the knowledge bridge to them and arm the patient with advanced self-knowledge about that. So it's where systems biology meets uh, natural uh, therapeutic. So that's metabolic code in a nutshell. Uh, what's influenced you from birth until now? Uh, metabolic code is looking at all those factors and then giving you a report that's extensive, patient-friendly, and a personalized plan of action for your lifestyle. And uh, as Jim will explain, this is not just for some doctors. This is for anybody who's whether conventionally trained or whether you've been in the metabolic code triads and taken a lot of the courses at A4M or something similar. Uh, this is going to form a new approach a personalized approach for each of your patients. And Jim, I'm going to hand it off to you here because you like to talk about how BHRT attracts uh, into this. Uh, so if you want to speak up about this and then we're going to, we're going to have uh, Janet switch the screen to Jim so he can show you this amazing assessment tool that's going to give you the ability to look at patients in a whole new way. Well, I think, you know, the main thing is, is that everybody's, you know, is uh, trained in doing BHRT to go through A4 or M and MMI and, and, and the, what you want to understand is what are the factors that are influencing when you're giving bioidentical hormone replacement because you know it's one thing to give a bioidentical hormone because everybody talks about you want your you know your T4 level here your T3 level there but yet people still have trouble 
you know, you, you get their numbers dialed in right, or you give them a nutrient, uh, you, or you give them a prescription for thyroid, and it still doesn't uh, correct the situation, your free fraction doesn't go up, that's because there's underlying metabolic shifts that are causing issues with how that hormone is working. And so the value of looking at uh, a whole systems biology approach is what dictates so, that. So this is just an example of a report. And really what this was born out of was, was just having to put together something that you can at least start to have a discussion with the patients and they can remember what shifts you're trying to affect. And so as you look at this, it really is, uh, it's based on three domains. One is to give a symptom survey. It's about 180 questions. I used to give 500 question surveys, but the 500 question surveys, you know, people would end up coming in and not answering them, so we barely buried it down to uh, 108, about 180 questions. And then, of course, there's biometrics. So, you know, heart rate, blood pressure, pH of saliva, body mass index, um, all of those things are things that can be added into the data set to create more accuracy in what you're trying to accomplish. And then, of course, there's lab analysis. Um, the interesting thing about the way we uh, built this is that we can put in any labs. We started at a certain spot because you can't build an infinite amount of labs at one, all at one time. But it really does take into account um, all uh, more of a systems approach so that, you know, when blood sugar is high, when a person's a person with diabetes, when their blood sugar is 120, it's more than just their blood sugar that's up and how it affects their pancreas. You know, it affects future cardiometabolic risk. It affects kidney risk. And that's what this tries to identify, and I think you'll see that in a minute. And so what, what you really do is you combine a questionnaire, biometrics, and lab analysis to create a comprehensive view of the person. Remember, you still have to practice medicine. You still have to be practicing the art because, you know, one person's 3'6", uh, 3T3, they might be feeling fantastic, and another person's 3.6, 3T3, they may have a lot of symptoms of low thyroid, and it may mean you have to, tw you have to tweak it a little bit. I mean, that, that's what I'm trying to get, a, you know, get across to you is that this is a guidepost. It helps you to identify where the strongest predictive risks are at. It's not a disease state management tool. It's not predicting that, oh, you have this disease or that disease. It's showing where the metabolic imbalances are and what nutrients can be helpful and so it shows you where the biggest disturbances are. So if you look in this individual, and I have uh, this individual. I have, uh, uh -oh. I, I have this individual's uh, permission to use his, his, uh, present, his report here. So I'm not violating any HIPAA laws. I asked him today. Uh, and so if you look, the, the largest disparity was in his adrenal, thyroid, and pancreas. And when I talk to patients, I tell them, well, that's your... Your, your triad of energy. It's how your body makes energy. Do you burn blood glucose? Does your thyroid produce energy through activating the mitochondria? What's your stress response? Are you making a lot of cortisol? Is the cortisol impacting your thyroid? All these three main endocrine organs are really the essence of how you make energy, store energy, feel cognitive, feel vital or not. And so he clearly, when you look at his questionnaire, and you look at his labs, so if you look up here, symptom scores and his lab scores, and you can look back at, at uh, the symptom scores, you can, you, know, you can review the questionnaire if you want to, but clearly between his blood sugar being off, which we'll see when we look at his labs, and the fact that you know, his energy wasn't good, he wasn't feeling focused you know, by midday, you know, he had a lot of symptoms of, you know, of hypocortisolism. And, and then if you look at the, the second triad that scored the highest, it was cardiopulmonary neurovascular. And once again, when you look at this, his symptom scores were high in cardio, his lab scores were pretty high in cardio. So guys, what I talked about earlier is you look here, you know, we look at the lab values and the symptoms that relate to the thyroid, adrenal, and pancreas. We build this as a unit because it's easy to explain to the patient, as I mentioned before, it's your, it's your triad of energy how you're storing fat, if you're thinking clearly, how your blood sugar is, are, are you, you know, where your thyroid hormones are at, are you burning fat efficiently, are you making energy efficiently. And in this individual, uh, cardiopulmonary was second, third was gut immune brain, fourth, liver, lymph, kidney, and fifth, testosterone. Why do I get uh, testosterone, estrogen, and, and uh, progesterone? Why do we group them this way? To try to make it easier to explain things to patients. 
I know for when I try to, you know, explain functional medicine labs and I give people like three different lab sets with, you know, 50 different analytes and a whole bunch of different markers and arrows going in every direction, they just get lost. They're, they're, they don't remember. They, most of them don't have science backgrounds. They don't remember all of it. So what I try to get across with this is that, look, there's five domains you're trying to balance with someone, uh, and, and, and these are the five domains, and they're all based on basically what's been accepted in medicine and healthcare. You know, the gut and brain barrier, the cardiopulmonary neurovascular network, you know, organs of detoxification, liver, lymph, and kidney. So the next piece is, is this next index. What is this next index doing? It's taking into account lab markers and um, subjective questionnaires, and what it's doing is it's showing how far away the individual is from optimal values and where that predictive risk of, of not being well. So it's easy to tell people when they're sick, right? If they have a, you know, if, if, if they have a CRP of 18 and a LDL particle number of 2400 and you do a coronary, you know, coronary uh, scan, and you see they've got a, a you know a 800 uh, coronary score, right? It's easy to see that, but it's it's what's leading to it. How far are they away from maintaining their health? And that's what the purpose of these vitality indicators are. You know, are they do they have problems with detoxification? What's their glucose balance like? What's their intestinal health like? What's their metabolic damage? So things like deoxyguanosine can be measured. Um, methylation. You know, all these different things can then, you know, be filtered and then you get a picture for the person that you can have a discussion with, basically with simple green, yellow, red, hey, this is what's optimal, this is where you're trending at risk. And the other thing that this does is it helps point to what other lab tests you may need. So, for example, if it's looking like they have toxic metals and, it, it, you know, it'll kick out, uh, you, know, you, know, you know, potentially do a uh, toxic metal test or... Uh, do a food allergy panel, right, if their antibodies come up on your thyroid. But you, it, it, what it's doing is pointing you in those directions. That's the goal of this uh, report. So then you come up with lab values. And this is a little bit subjective, but we've got, because you're going to hear things from different experts. Some experts are like, hey, uh, all, all, I treat all T4s, free T4s under 4. Other people would go, nah, you know what, I do it based on symptoms plus if they're, you know, three, two to four, I'm okay with it. As long as the symptoms aren't there, I don't have a problem with it, right? So, so there's a little bit of subjectivity to these values, but all of these values are the normal ranges, and we create an optimum, a, a trending low, trending high, at-risk high, and at-risk low. So that's the red, yellow, green, yellow, red. And, and so in this situation, you know, we're looking at, you know, you know, this particular individual's the HEA, and if you look, it's at 60. It's incredibly low. His blood cortisol is very low. Um, he had 20 years of stress. He admitted to the stress. He knew that the stress was bringing him down. No longer felt anxious, just kind of felt flat. So this is what you'd expect in his cortisol. Here is where you start to look at the lab values, and I had mentioned there's a little bit of subjectivity to it, but we don't artificially construct the normals. We create optimums based on lab values. So, for example, we know when people are trending low on cortisol. You guys have been taught that, you know, when they're trending high on cortisol. You know that a blood sugar of between 70 and 84 is ideal. 84 to 90 is okay. 90 to 99 is, you know, trending high. And above 99, or, you know, is high, right? And so that's the way it's set up. And it's set up just to give people a visual representation of where, you know, where your labs land. And these are all labs that they're traditionally used to getting, um, which makes it a little bit easier also for you to be able to explain. Uh, so this just kind of goes through, um, you know, on here and the immune. We didn't have any gut markers on, on uh, this individual, on Bernie, which is, like I said, we can use Bernie. We gave him the okay today. Uh, and, uh, you know, obviously his vitamin D is trending low, his eosinophils are, are okay, but they're a little bit high at risk. We'd rather see those eosinophils under two. Actually, we'd love them if they're zero. Um, and then if you look here, cardiovascular, look at his LDL particle number. 2285, you know, his cholesterol is, you know, trending high, his LDL is high, his LPA is okay. And uh, obviously if you look at his blood pressure, 
139 over 89. That's showing that it's a, you know, it's a, it, a, an alarm. It's not a severe alarm, but it's certainly an alarm. Uh, and then if you look at his liver points, uh, he's got a few trending risks. His triglycerides are up over 150. We consider optimum my triglycerides under 100, obviously because of the latest guidelines. Uh, and, and then so this goes through, and if you look here, uh, his uh, creatinine at 114 is okay. His GFR is kind of starting to trend low. And so we like to call those kind of things out because either, you know, they drink more water, maybe we need to use some kidney-specific herbs, especially if you're going to be doing things like detoxification on an individual. Uh, you know, this, this uh, you know, the 67 is kind of a trending low mark that just makes you aware that if you're just going through the labs, it would say normal. But obviously we know there's grades of normal, just like shades of gray. So, and then, we, of course, we get into hormones is, is you know, his DHT, his testosterone. Obviously, he's really not on a 129 to 767. He just barely meets acceptability for a 65-year-old. But, you know, he, you know, ideally, we would still want to optimize him. So when we talk to him, because of his sex hormone binding globulin being high, obviously, his free testosterone is way too low. And probably his chronic cortisol and high insulin is affecting his sex hormone binding globulin. So, Remember, this is on a 129 to 767 scale, not from 160 to 1100. So in this particular instance, while he's trending low, he's not really, you know, he's just at the borderline. So, so the next thing we look at is his ranking order on his questionnaire. Because it's one thing, you know, as we well know, you have people that come in and their labs are perfect and they give you all kinds of symptoms they're having. Does it mean that they're a head case? No, not necessarily. It means that their labs haven't changed yet to reflect necessarily the way they're feeling. And then other people, you come in and you look at their labs and they're really bad, and yet they don't report many symptoms. So it's important to be able to look at both symptoms and the labs, both individually and then additively. And so in this case, cardiopulmonary comes up number one and uh, adrenal thyroid pancreas comes up number two um, versus how the labs and the, the questionnaire shook out. The next thing that happens is it gives you a summary. So this just shows you what labs and how off they are. So the more arrows, the more that it's off. So triglycerides are up too much, DHEA is up too much. And this just goes through each of the triads and shows the labs that are behind each of the triads and, and, and why it's rendering this decision. So you're able to discuss it with your, with your patient, you know, uh, and, and so the, all, all of these being important, of course. And then, of course, with triad three, uh, you know, once again, it's cholesterol, it's LDL, it's LDLP. Homocysteine is slightly up over eight, but not too bad. Uh, and so all of these are creating an additive effect. The next step that occurs is this explains all of the lab values for people. And I think this is one of the real big areas that people really appreciate is that, is that they get to take something home or they can open it up and put it, you know, look at it in, their, in their, their personal portal and they can go, wow, this explains you know, what my labs are, what they mean in everyday terms, and, and how I feel potentially. Right? So, all this, so we could just go through these. We don't need to uh, you know, kind of go through them, but it just explains what each of these lab values mean for that patient, and, you know, which I think has got a lot of value. Um, you know, so many times I know all of you guys here to say, now what is that? What's CRP again? Gee, what, what's homocysteine again? Why is that important? And you know, it just helps with cutting down questions. And I know for a few of the, the folks that have been using this that we've gotten you know, some feedback from, they find that it does help reduce the amount of questions that they get asked which is, you know, was kind of the primary reason for designing this thing, just from being in practice so long. I would just repetitively be at answering the same questions over and over. So I want to quickly move through here, um, you know, and get to the, to the next piece to, of this. Let me try to get to the over here. And that's, we have a supplement recommendation. They're all color-coded. So each of these are, it's like stacking granimals, right? When you were a kid and you needed to match up your clothes, it's doing the same thing for the patient. So when they look at what you recommend, you can say, this is for triad one, this is for triad two, this is working on cardiopulmonary, this is working on you know, the adrenal thyroid pancreas, 
Now, we, so you can make your own recommendations or suggestions. You can approve or disapprove any of these. But this is just kind of giving you the total. And then you might say, I want to work on triad one or two. Or maybe the patient says to you, you know what, doctor, I only got enough money to, to work on triad one. At least there's a focus and that they, and that they can see what they're working towards. And, and uh, you, could, you could also take the report and you could write out your own products based on this. It's okay, we're gonna, we're gonna end up having, we're working on it right now, is having a generic report also print out so that you're able to make recommendations based on whatever products you, you choose. Obviously, there's an infinite number and combination of products out there that would make it pretty difficult to, to just create a report that, you know, that recommends whatever it is you have. Um, we obviously have Metagenics as a category captain. Uh, they were very supportive in, in developing it. And so some of the products in here, uh, many of the products in here are Metagenics, but once again, you can recommend your orthomolecular products, your Zymogen products, your Designs for Health products. Uh, if you need an adrenal product, you kind of, if it says adrenal, this is adrenal cortex, any number of adrenal cortex products would work. CoQ10, same thing. Um, if you know Coratrin, that's a red yeast rice um, and sterols product. You know, several companies have red yeast rice and sterols. Um, so the whole purpose of this is to give you a runway to say, here are the things that you would recommend for each of the triads. And guess what? Triad 1 came up the most. I'm going to reduce your anxiety. I'm going to give you a multi. I'm going to work on getting your cortisol to come back to get your energy up. Uh, and then I'm going to look at giving you some magnesium, and that's where I'm going to stop from there. And most of you know if you work on someone's adrenals, you give them some magnesium, you help balance their blood sugar, uh, and you give them a multi, they're going to feel pretty good, especially for the people where they're in this situation. So you give them something to dampen their stress response so that they feel more calm because they've been overtaxed with stress, it's going to be a big help for them. And obviously, this you know the the the, the restore T is a uracoma. It's a testosterone support product. You know, you, you might choose. Hey, I want to focus on triad one and triad five to start. I'm going to give you a script for bioidentical hormones. I want you to take this methane and I want you to do these things for triad one. It gives you a lot of flexibility in how you recommend your product. You can, you can order them, and it'll be shipped directly to the patient. Um, or you can obviously you can carry your own stock in your in your practice. That's fine. Our real emphasis here was to try to give you a landing pay, uh, pad for okay. What do I get? Where do I start? And this starts to orient product to triad shifts to what the patient feels the most and where their labs are the most disturbed. Uh, the next piece, of course, is uh, this practitioner note, and it kind of goes through what things you may want to check, like consider bioidentical hormone. Uh, replacement. Think for checking on viruses or immune, you know, kind of an immune panel. So looking for chronic infections or buds. Uh, you look at further, further cardiovascular evaluation. Look at, you know, as lipid targets aren't reached, consider something like, you know, a, a niacin product or you could consider bergamot, right? It'll kick those things out for you, but it gives you this suggestion page so you kind of know where to look the next time they come in. Uh, the next piece, of course, is going to the Lifestyle Guidance Portal. John's going to cover that, uh, which I just want to kind of, so this will lead them to what kind of diet and what type of exercise plan. The last piece that we have are these, I think, really nice renderings of each of the organ systems with an explanation of what are your adrenal glands, where are they, what do they do, why, why do they fail, what is stress, you know, how, you know, you know, how are you going to feel under stress. And even though Saley's model of stage one, two, and three, you know, a lot of people are, well, it's really not all that accurate. We, we, I like the way it explains stress to the consumer. We know that there is, as healthcare professionals, there's a lot of variance in the stress response that's going on. Um, and there's, you know, whether there's exact stages to it or not, but there are, there are these kind of easy messages that we can tell people memory loss, feeling anxious, blood sugar's going up, blood pressure's going up, cholesterol's up, weight gain. So if, if, if uh, Bernie looks at himself, he goes, wow, that's me. And that's kind of the reason we add those kind of value propositions into this information. Because we want people to go, wow, that's me. They got it. And what does that mean? It, gives you, it makes your job easier. And so this just goes through, once again, guys, I don't want to have to you know, bother you with looking at all these, but they're pretty beautiful renderings, and they talk about what each of the organ systems 
how when they're unbalanced, it creates a problem. Uh, probably one of the most important ones, on, I think in this one I have an example of, uh, let me see, we've got the thyroid adrenal pancreas, and then, uh, okay, it's buffering, I guess, let's see. For some reason, there we go. So, so you know, this is kind of cardiopulmonary neurovascular. It goes through and explains vagal tone, you know, deep breathing. Why, you know, what is vagal tone? A lot of you are doing heart rate variability. So it tries to get to those big concepts we're trying to move people in uh, as best as we can. I think this is done buffering. Um, and so this is that there's the thyroid, then it goes to cardiopulmonary. For some reason, my buffering is really slow tonight. Must be the weather. We'll blame it on the weather when all else fails. So I think you get the picture. That, that what this report does creates lab profile, creates a questionnaire, uh, adds the biometrics, orders all of those, and then creates relationships between all of that information that vectors where the biggest shifts are. It then explains it to people. And so if you look, as you look here, this kind of goes through the brain, it goes through the neurovascular network, the cardiopulmonary, when your next appointment is. And, and, and so then it renders the decisions. It helps guide you on what to do. Obviously, you're still going to prescribe medicines. This can't prescribe medicines. Otherwise, that's a whole different ball of wax to the FDA. This is imbalances in metabolism, nutritional support that help to reorder those imbalances and point you to better clinical decision making to see where the big shifts are. And more importantly, if you're really advanced at this, it's really giving you a document that you give to the patient. And now all of a sudden they're seeing the value and they can take it home to their spouse and they can explain, begin to explain what's going on. And I think that's a real big value because I, I had a lot of spouse resistance. First that they come in they're by themselves, second visit all of a sudden the spouse is sitting down with their arms crossed looking at you like, what are you doing taking this money from me, right? And we're trying to get those barriers over and show the value. So John, I'll let this go over, I'm, I'm, you know, come over to you now. Uh, but, I, but, but that's the, 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 uh, so the uh, metabolic code assessment report. And you approve all of those decisions, by the way. There, you see the report, you have to approve it before it goes to the patient. You can approve what supplements you want them to order. That way it's all under your guy's control. This is not like uh, trying to brainwash you to do things in any one certain way. It's just giving you, a, you know, some guidelines as to, as to what to do. So go ahead, John. Do you want okay, me to great. pass this over and, to you, John? And, and, uh, yes. yes, pass it over to John. All right, yes. I will pass it over. So, Jim, that was a great description. I, I have to tell you, the... Um, the yes, to whatever. Yeah, I'm going to show my screen now. I, I've talked to a couple hundred of, of the doctors at the A4M and MMI meetings over the last few months, and uh, one of the doctors said, so this is not your average assessment. And I said, absolutely, because what it really does is it gives you a place at myairsupport.com where you can really easily just have a patient fill out a questionnaire that's extensive but very simple uh, and very comprehensive but easy to do and then combine that in, in one step with a, a lab result and have it generate something that actually packages you know 30 years of Jim Laval's brain and the science behind it into a report that as extensive and comprehensive as it is actually boils all of this down into a, a way that is consumable by the consumer. I showed this to my wife, you mentioned the spouse, and you know, she came home recently with her own blood test from a different doctor. It was just black and white, doodles, circles on things, no idea what was going on, less than symbols, greater than symbols. This report, when you take it out and show it to a patient once it's approved, bridges that gap, and I think it really sets the stage for the, now what do I do? And when you tell them, well now you're going to buy these supplements if you want to make sure that you don't get worse and that you do get optimal. Um, and when I recommend a diet or when you, you know, to tell the patient why they should follow a new diet, an exercise program, and lifestyle change, you actually, you know, essentially can hit them over the head with this because it actually provides all of the credibility layer and all of the foundation for the advice as opposed to it just coming out of your mouth. It looks very comprehensive and very professional. And from any of you that I've met in person, very impressive report. It's almost 35 pages. And one of the recommendations that you're going to find regardless of the outcome of this report, is you're probably going to want to make some sort of a lifestyle uh, recommendation because most patients want you to tell them not just to exercise, 
not just to change their diet, but how. And not only how, but how to do it on a daily basis. What do I do tomorrow, doctor? How do I start an exercise plan? What do I eat all day long? And so uh, just like Jim created the air support report to make sure that you'd be able to actually simplify the communication of what optimal wellness looks like and their, and their markers and all the, what he just covered, we also created the Lifestyle Guidance Portal as part of the system so that when you tell a patient to start an exercise program, a diet, a lifestyle change, you're actually going to send them home with a plan that goes to them every day in your branded portal, to them by email, by text, etc. And I'm going to walk you through this uh, very topically, very quickly, uh, but offer you an opportunity to see all of this and air support for free at the end of this uh, without any obligation. So here's a, a typical login screen. This can be branded with your practice name. This is currently branded as the Lifestyle Guidance Portal brand. And essentially what will happen is you'll log into your portal, and the first thing you'll see when you do is your own dashboard of information that relates to how to use the portal. And the main functions of it are pretty simple, actually, although it's a really big content management system. And what you'll have is you'll have a whole um, list of wellness plans available to you which are ready to go and able to be deployed in literally seconds. So this one section I'm looking at now is the, uh, the core library of premium templates in this sample uh, practitioner profile that I'm in now that include all the metabolic code premium templates. So in a lot of the cases that Jim talked about where you've got somebody who is uh, struggling with uh, you know, gut, gut, uh, leaky gut, dysbiosis, uh, they're, they're allergic to things, they're not losing weight because they've got some insulin resistance and they need, a, they need a low glycemic diet, there are several calorie points and options to use in this uh, metabolic code uh, phase one diet. It's an elimination diet. And I'm going to show you that in just a second. But in addition to that, we've loaded your library with a whole bunch of other templates that are going to be commonly requested and also commonly uh, suggested by you for patients that have certain uh, uh, maybe more generic needs. They need, they need to be on a paleo diet or they want to be on a gluten-free diet. So you've got all of these options built into your library. And the way that they're constructed, whether it's a, a lifestyle diet like the Calorie for Life diet, or the Mediterranean diet, they're all constructed to give you an opportunity to not have to redo or rethink any of this. So literally when you open up the preview for this 1500 calorie express diet, by way of example, you'll find inside of it that there are already weeks of content pre-programmed, pre-written, and ready to be deployed. So when you bring uh, Mary Smith to the table, you go over your assessment report, and you talk about the reasons why she might want to go on an elimination diet, you don't have to explain to her that you're going to hand her booklets and uh, give her two hours of explanation on how she would do an elimination diet. You can explain a little bit of that, but you'll be able to actually tell her, look, I'm going to enroll you in our really cool uh, uh, lifestyle support system. And it's going to actually uh, send you information every single day uh, that's not just newslettery or tips and tricks, but actually your plan for every single day. So an introduction to what's happening today, all of your meals, how to prepare them, what the nutritional values are, and also substitutions if you're not sure that this is the right snack, lunch, entree, breakfast, whatever, with time-saving tips uh, for every day. So. Unlike a lot of websites where you're sending a patient to just read about a gluten-free diet or read about a paleo diet or read about an elimination diet, you're going to actually enroll somebody in a directed care path that's going to happen with or without your additional intervention. And of course, you will intervene because, you're, you know, like Jim said, there's an art to practice and it's not just something you're going to automate. But the support mechanism that this provides has been so well received by patients of, of hundreds of providers that are using this because they've got their daily plan. Here's what you're going to do today. And then they've also got all this additional resource to go along with that. And obviously, the, all of our templates are not this comprehensive, but the, the elimination diet has built into it uh, a carbohydrate counting tool uh, each week at a glance, uh, grocery lists, food comparisons, uh, you know, all of the, the, the sample uh, diet layouts, which, which foods will be eliminated in what order. So for the student, you know, the, the patient who is a student that likes to read, they can dig into this for hours 
and learn about everything that they need to know about their diet. And for those who just want to be told what to do, they'll just get their daily content. Some of them might not even log into their account, although a lot of them do. And they'll get this in email every day by text if they want and be able to read it on any device, tablet, phone, or computer and know that you're, you're providing this content to them as a resource. Now, we have a lot of diets. I don't want to go over all of them tonight. I can show all these to you on a tutorial if you join the free trial. But we also have a lot of exercise plans. And what's cool about these is that they include, again, a full plan, just like if you were going to get like a DVD from you know, some company that's going to walk you through every day, you can log on to their account and, or get by email an actual daily routine it's split up into what uh, you know, by body part, if it's a walking plan by each day distances, and where there are exercises, we've actually taken the trouble of filming with a professional certified per, uh, personal fitness trainer all of the exercises in both static uh, starting and ending positions as well as short video clips that will demonstrate for the person how to do a body weight squat or a body weight push up or a wall sit so that they, if they, they don't know how, they have no excuse because you're going to actually show it to them without you having to construct all this. It's all done for you and it's all deployed by you at the click of a mouse. So without getting into too much of the, the plan content, I'm going to show you really quickly uh, how simple it is to enroll somebody in one of those plans. Uh, on a daily basis, your, your typical practice flow would be as simple as taking somebody's email address. I'm going to put it in for just an example. Um, this would be a patient's email address, for example. Um, and I'm sure I've gotten uh, somebody else's email here. I'm just going to give, give you a quick example. And once you enter somebody's email and name, you basically just tell them, look, we're going to put you on a program today that is really cool, engaging you daily, and you're going to receive a confirmation email in just a few minutes. Let's do a different name here. And then you're going to choose from your drop-down. So all the plans I showed you before in your wellness plans library up here are now going to be available to you here in this deployment spot. So all you need to do to enroll somebody is literally put their name, address, and the plan you want for them. And within seconds, they're going to get an email that says they've got an account on your portal. And so they'll click on the activation link in that email and that's all they need to do to get started. Once they do that, they'll be directed to a password creation screen and in seconds they'll be able to land on their own account on your branded portal but it's built just for them. Their plan that you've chosen for them with the content that you wanted them to see and then a whole bunch of other really cool tools that will enable you to have a patient feedback loop and a way to measure their compliance so that when they come back in and they talk to you about the program they're on you'll actually be able to see what they're doing, how often, and maybe make some recommendations about why they're, they're not losing weight, they're losing too much weight. Uh, my screen is just going to take a second to refresh. It looks like I've got my own internet connection issue there. And once that lands, you're going to see day one of the program for that patient, Arlene Parker. And essentially, um, looks like I landed on day two. Um, we are going to see the content laid out for the patient. And it's going to be typically, um, you know, depending on the plan you have and what day you enroll them, they're going to actually see the same content laid out in the same format that you envisioned when you were previewing their account. So now you're in Arlene Parker's account, who you've enrolled just seconds ago, and she's logged in and she can see the same content that you chose for her. Now, what's really neat about the patient experience is that patients do like to track things. Not all of them will. Uh, we made it very simple for them to track things in one click. And if they need to, to make any uh, amendments to those foods in case they've eaten a little more or a little less than you've asked them to, or in case they found themselves eating something that's off the beaten track, well, maybe too on the beaten track, but not what you suggested, they can find all those foods in a database of 100,000 foods and track those from their phone, their tablet, their computer, and keep track of all their, their metrics, calories, um, their activities. If, if you want them to track their activities or if they want to, they can do that from a list of um, different things. And also by tracking the number of minutes that they spent, get an idea of the calories burned in addition to the calories consumed. And then they can also keep track of their body metrics so they can get a visual of where they stand in terms of progress 
overall and against a goal weight or goal metric on a nice chart. So I won't go into all the features, but they can journal. Uh, they can say things about you know how they're feeling, how much water they're drinking, you know what their perception of the diet is, and then they can also share that journal with you so that you can view it as well as send you private messages, store photos, a lot of the functions that you would take for granted in a more of a social setting, although this is all locked down privately and the messaging is HIPAA compliant. So if I log on to the, um, the practitioner account and take a look at that, that patient's record, what I'll find is that there are um, all of the metrics and the things that that patient is tracking are visible to you. And we did this so that when you, when you, as you enroll your patients into the system, it's not just pushing information at them, but you can open up the record for each of these patients and actually see what day of the plan they're on, uh, what they're seeing. So you can load the plan data and see which day of the plan they're on. And then also have a view into their food log. So if they're storing food data, uh, you'll see that stored here in detail. If they're storing any uh, body metrics, you'll have the opportunity to view that here and print it out, as well as add your own metrics, and then also see their activity, add documents to their account if you want to add more information. And you know, Jim, one of your things we're going to cover in a second is you've got this extensive monograph library built in for, as a provider. You can add those uh, documents here: vitamins, nutraceuticals, uh, you know, conditions. Uh, and then last but not least, one of the really great functions about this is that in addition to being able to put patients on different programs in one click, you can also assign a survey to the patient, which is a metabolic code assessment that gives you a, a little bit of a scaled down version of the larger assessment that you see in air support, but is eight categories of somewhat more topical assessment about diet, lifestyle, and things like that, that allow you to see where a patient scores on those issues and what supplement recommendations you might make just for the diet and lifestyle um, topic. And that will also, as Jim showed you on the air support side, be rendered in a color-coded format so that you can actually get an idea of whether or not they're answering in a, in a risky trend or in a, uh, you know, a more ideal trend. So the, the, the no's and the never's to these uh, questions are going to be are good. And the ones that are yes, I always you know feel sleepy after eating a high carbohydrate meal uh, would be would be negative. So you'll see all that in a color coded fashion and use that as an additional assessment tool in your practice. So there is an opportunity for you as the practitioner to have a wellness plans library, which is basically constructed of uh, as many plans as you need to use. You can use all of these or some of them. You've got about a dozen metabolic code plans, which include the elimination diet that I showed you that lasts for about a month and a half, so that you can keep them on it for as long as you need to, and then also reintroduction phase diets at different calorie points, so that you can put a patient on 90 days of reintroducing what was eliminated. And I didn't cover it, but the elimination diet is going to eliminate soy, dairy, gluten, peanuts, eggs if you want to, if there's another option for that and it's also low glycemic. So it's a very comprehensive diet for elimination, for leaky gut, and then you can reintroduce those foods over a 90-day period in a staged manner. And basically, between those two phases, there's going to be literally almost four and a half to five months of support, information, treatment, and daily guidance without having to do, without having to lift a finger beyond what you do already face-to-face. -face. And at the same time, give them an amazing amount of care and interaction. So that library is available to you, unlimited plans. You can change you know, all of these uh, non-premium templates to suit your needs. Maybe you don't like the paleo diet exactly the way it's written. You can, you can customize it. You can build your own exercise plans. And then you can have inside of this an unlimited number of patients that you can enroll in just one click. Pick a plan, pick the survey, and just hit submit to enroll them and start that conversation going. So between the air support and the lifestyle guidance portal, you've got two tools that really take everything that Jim has been talking about in terms of how do I make this easier for me as a practitioner and yet make it so much more effective for the patient to reach a point of optimal wellness. And these two tools together, I think, are, are a killer combination. Um, we realize that not every practitioner will um, you know, be in need of every part of it. 
but for the most part, we found that a lot of the practitioners like you that we've spoken to at the meetings have found that the, uh, the combination of these two um, is, is a really great combination because you have the assessment tool. I'm just going to scroll through some of these screens here, which are, are non-web-based uh, representations. Um, you have the ability to assess with air support and make the supplement, supplement and, and dietary recommendations and then use the lifestyle guidance portal to also in one click support the, the patient through the, the, the trajectory that you're telling them you want them to follow as opposed to just saying, hey, go to uh, you know, this calorie counting website or go to the gym and meet a trainer. You're going to actually give them all the information that they need to take the action. And I brought this screen up because we've actually constructed both the lifestyle guidance portal and the air support based upon Jim and his team's knowledge base. You know, I can take a lot of credit for the software that we've built into the lifestyle guidance portal um, and the way that we've built the library, but really both the air support and the lifestyle guidance portal as we're giving it to you uh, in this combination are based on Jim's resources and education and, and science over the last couple of decades that, that have a whole different approach to integrative medicine. So all of that is built into your account by default. And I wanted to show you really quickly, when you log into your account on the Lifestyle Guidance Portal, you're going to have at your disposal, uh, without any additional cost or fuss, uh, you know, dozens and dozens of condition monographs so you can show patients what you're talking about when you're saying that they've got a GI disorder. You know, you can just click on a PDF, open that up for them, print it, add it to their account, and it's going to actually show them a complete snapshot of what it means to have this problem with your digestive system. You know, what is a microflora? Why does this matter to my, my weight and my health? Uh, and what is the science um, and references behind all of that? So all of these monographs are multiple page, uh, you know, dozens and dozens if not hundreds of references that support uh, the information. And this is going to back up everything you're telling the patient uh, from uh, conditions to nutrient deficiency charts uh, to vitamins and nutri uh, nutrients. You can actually take all these, download them, put them into your patient's account, and share them with them in a way that's contextually relevant to what you're recommending from air support and what you're recommending in terms of their diet and lifestyle changes. So this library of monographs is literally hundreds of PDFs that Jim and the Metabolic Code team have put together over a very long period of time so that you don't have to. And this is all included in your account. It's all available to you with one click. And it's able to be deployed to any person's account in your system uh, with all this information in just seconds. So that's uh, an amazing uh, you know, component of this. And also, when you log into your account, you have at your disposal all the resources about the metabolic code diets and other tools on the portal, as well as some marketing tools uh, and a link right to your air support system from here. So it's meant to be one really comprehensive but simple system. And you can try all of this um, for 30 days at no obligation. So the way that it's priced is if you wanted to get air support by itself, it's $199 per month. If you wanted to get Lifestyle Guidance Portal by itself, it's $297 per month. You can get both together for $396 per month as a bundle. And both of the systems are set up intentionally for you to not have any other cost besides the monthly license. So you can add unlimited patients, unlimited programs, uh, generate unlimited reports and air support, um, and engage unlimited number of patients in the Lifestyle Guidance Portal at no other cost. So your first month is free. You have a month-to-month -month contract. There's no long-term commitment. You get unlimited support. And you can try all of this uh, at metaboliccode.com or also at lifestyleguidanceportal.com. Either way, you can sign up and get the bundle. And uh, we would be delighted. You know, I've met so many of you, and I know Jim has, obviously, more than I have, uh, at the meetings at A4M and MMI. And this seems to be, for a great majority of you, a really good solution to a lot of the challenges you face. And we would love to show it to you, work with you, um, have the whole team you know, involved in the orientation process of getting you on here. And what's really cool is that it literally takes under 30 minutes to orient you on the system and get you going um, in using it. So we'd love to have you just jump on there and try it. If you don't like it, 
will will knock you off the uh, the account uh, right away. There's no uh, there's no obligation or hassle with that regard, and um, and that's how the system works. And I'm I'm delighted to be working with Jim and his team on putting all this together for you, um, from both the science, the, the medical, and the technology perspective. And uh, that's all I have to say, Jim. I wanted to leave it for you for a final word, but uh, you know, thanks for your great coverage of air support tonight. And I hope to see some of you uh, in a, in a free trial on the uh, on the system in the in the coming days. Yeah, I, I you know just I'm glad you guys spent time tonight uh, with us. The uh, you know the real neat thing about diet and exercise, the platform of lifestyle guidance portal, is the other big issue that that we had every day in practice with people, and I still have with my patients in my practice in California, we got to give them information they can take home and guide them to create better decisions for them that makes it easy for them. No, you can't put the food in their mouth. No, you can't force them to do things, but we can give them the tools. And this was a way to put the tools together that help you to be more successful in practice and get your retention up. You're never going to have 100% retention with people. It's not going to happen because a lot of people decide they don't want to change. But if you get that retention back up to you know 70 percent, 65, 70 percent of, of the total people that are doing nutritional care with you, that allows for a successful practice. And uh, that's all I have to say. Uh, thank, thanks for sharing the time tonight. Well, we have questions. Okay. Okay. Uh, Janet Miller, we'll start with you. Go ahead and ask your yes, question. Yes. Hi. Yes. Um, does the metabolic code um, air support take into account what medications and supplements the patient is already taking? Oh, that'd be next to impossible. So you have to, you kind of have to do that in your interview. They, other than it takes into account from the the, the, the uh, drug induced nutrient depletions, it certainly takes into account that. But it, you know, it would be an, an unbelievably huge algorithm to to try to take into account all of that. We're assuming that you as the practitioner are, are making those decisions going, okay, they're on these meds. Um, you know, am I trying to get them off of them? Because at the end, what they're on is creating what their chemistry and their subjective questionnaire is stating anyway. So what they're currently doing is creating the numbers and the report that you've generated. So you're going to make decisions based on that report. Okay. All right. Um, does the portal uh, integrate with an existing electronic medical record? No. No. All you need to do is you can. All you have to do is you can download the PDF of the report and put it into your EMR. So you don't. You don't. It, you know. Once again, there's a thousand EMRs out there. So to be able to integrate with that would be, you know, next to impossible. I don't think there's any software platform that's robust enough to do that. So. But you can, you can certainly print any of the reports. You can make a report both on the diet to show that you did counseling on it. You can, um, you, you can you know, create the PDF of the, of the metabolic codes um, program, and, uh, and then you just store that as a document in your EMR. Okay. One last question. Um, I have a patient that emailed me yesterday, wants to come in because they need to gain weight. Um, and they need, you know, lifestyle and, uh, you know, blood work done and everything. I haven't seen them yet. But I was wondering, is there a, a diet on the um, lifestyle portal that would help someone gain weight? Well, yeah, we've got a, um, a couple of calorie points. Jim's, uh, the metabolic code diets can go up to 1,800 calories. And then there's, there's rules for enhancement. I think well, Jim, 300 calories yeah, sure. than that. Well, the first thing you have to do is you've got to figure out why are they having trouble gaining weight. Exactly. So, so then they may not need to eat more calories. They may need to, you may need to correct why they're having trouble gaining weight. So if it shows gut immune brain and they've got a leaky gut and, um, and, and, and it maybe cues you that you may have to test for bugs, like you know, parasites or something, mm -hmm. um, you, that would be the first layer of intervention. And then you can pick what diet. You may decide, I need a higher carbohydrate diet because this person is having trouble with their weight. I'm going to go with a Mediterranean diet with them, but yeah. it really, it, you know, so you may decide Mediterranean, you may decide ketogenic, you may you, you may decide you know what I think I'm going to stick with a modified lower carb diet because I think the fats and the proteins are what they really needed. I'm going to correct their gut and get rid of their yeast. They probably are going to start to gain their weight. So so once again, um, it 
you, all it's doing is pointing you in the right directions and giving you the evidence and then giving you the tools. You still are going to have to make some decisions when you have a person come in like that that you're going, okay, they need to gain weight. Why, why can't they gain weight? And then what diet do I think is going to be the best one to assign? Right. It's right there at your fingertips. A couple strokes and you're there. Yeah, and we've also got uh, a couple of gym, the, the, the lifestyle guidance uh, or the lifestyle diets that we have, which are sort of like, you know, South Beach diety kind of things. They're kind of permissive diets. So once you get past the, the medical issues and, you, and you're, you're sure that you're not just, you know, dealing with leaky gut and other issues that you need to address uh, in that regard, these diets run from anywhere from 1,000 to 2,200 calories where you can actually, you know, really start to bump somebody up on calories when that's appropriate. Uh, and as Jim mentioned, well, carbohydrates. So it's there for yeah. you in a lot of phases. Yeah, and, and honestly, it's really, um, you know, they, they may need to do 3,500 calories. It depends on the level of activity, all those things, but you can do that. Yep. I got to see him first. Thank you yep. so much. I like this. Great. That's great. Okay, John. Hold on, John. John, you're up. I was just checking to see if you're able to um, set it up so we can get the answers to the question air on the air yes. support. We can yeah. get that now? Yes. What you'll do is you just go back in to review the questionnaire and uh -huh. actually you'll see all 180 questions answered and they're actually broken down by, you know, each of the triads so you can quickly flip to, well, what, you know, what you could, you know, basically um, uh, scan down through the questionnaire and go, oh, wow, I saw they answered a lot of questions on adrenal. I wonder which ones they answered. Go to that. Go to the adrenal section, and there you go. And you can tell whether it's if they're anxious or they're flat. You know, or, you know, you know, you know. What are the symptoms that they're having? You know, they're getting dizzy on standing. Um, so yes, you, you certainly can. Great. That, that's, and that's air support, right? Not the lifestyle that's guidance. Correct. We can always do that. Okay. Right. Right. Exactly. Great. Thanks. Sure. Okay, Jonalyn, your hand is up. Hey, can you hear us? Yes. Yeah, you sure can. Okay. Um, as far, I mean, I, this looks like, is this enough for the provider to be used as a, I guess, the electronic medical record? No, it isn't. It, it really isn't meant to be an electronic medical record. Um, it, you know, the, the, that space is bloody and, and there's a million of them. And we really um, made something that can support any medical record, right? So you're able to, I mean, it's HIPAA compliant, obviously, but, but you're, you know, you're not getting all of the functionality that you do for an EMR, you know, whether it be, you know, prescribing um, or the other, fa you know, other e-prescribing or other, uh, you know, things that you get traditionally with EMRs. But, but certainly this works well with an EMR because you're able to just, you know, obviously you're able to, you know, download any of the information you need to into your EMR. The, the notes itself can be created here, right? Yes, that is correct. So, yeah. Um, the, the other question is, well, I guess we have a few questions. Okay. The, um, the cost for the patient on this, what do... That's up, that's up to you. What, what is the norm out there? Well, John, you've had people charging twenty bucks a month, five to twenty dollars a month to be on the portal, right? Yeah, it's it's actually it's going to depend upon the way that you do your current practice model. So we've got uh, practices anywhere from uh, weight loss practitioners to you know traditional slash functional, and essentially if if you've got a, a health package consultation price. Uh, that you're normally going to charge somebody for the assessment and the recommendations, uh, you might want to bump that up by you know 50 or 100 hours to 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 cover the cost of a an eight week or a 12 week program, maybe even more than that if it's a high performance practice. Um, the only and you can charge a monthly subscription as well, anywhere from ten dollars to twenty nine dollars. Our only caveat is that the only pricing structure that we've seen fail with this is if you charge patients access to the portal and tell them I'm going to charge you access to this portal because essentially what you do then is you decouple your credibility and the, the power of your you know being being a provider from the technology and then their their mindset is well I can find stuff on the internet myself can I 
And the answer is, of course you can, but you're not going to find it with my guidance, my compliance, my cooperation, and my support. And so you don't want to even create that separation in their minds. I would include it as part of your offering of your overall wellness consultation, your overall uh, offering, and you can do that at any price point that works for your demographic. But as Jim mentioned, it could be $20 a month. It could be $100 for the package. Well, and you're going to want to test what works for your, your, and your you, practice. And you, can, and you can charge on the reports, too. It's just everybody's different in the way they do their practices. So we don't, I, I personally never wanted to say, oh, yeah, you charge this much. Because, you know, some people are in Boston. Some people are in Manhattan. Other people are in, you know, Poughkeepsie. Right, and the and the and the pricing can change. When I practiced in Cincinnati, you know, I, it was a very price sensitive community, so I had to be, you know, a little more aggressive, and I would watch. And the big thing for me was getting the retention. That's what I was looking for. Things that kept the patients coming back to me and following the lead that I had to get them better. I wonder if it's available for people who practice outside the United States. Yes. The, uh, the, yeah, the, so it's cloud-based, so you're able to do it. It's no, it's no problem. Um, the only thing I would say is the lab values, um, if you're using international standards, uh, of course, will, will vary until we get to being able to do those conversions. But in terms of the, the lifestyle work guidance platform, there should be no problem with that. Um, you know, so that's it. You know, yeah, if, we've got, if you've got U.S. labs that, you, that, that you, know, you know, we can do it, then yes, no problem. Yeah, and we've got customers using the Lifestyle Guidance Portal and Air Support uh, in both the U.S. and Canada. And we, I know we've got uh, Lifestyle Guidance Portal customers in Mexico, Dominican Republic, Australia. Uh, so, yeah, there's, there's very few limitations other than the language barrier. Oh, okay, I understand. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Okay, Amit, you need to unmute on your side. Go ahead. Hi, um, yeah, I have a uh, quick question about the labs. Uh, are the labs, uh, can I order them from any lab, or is there a specific lab that I uh, send uh, my patients' uh, labs yeah, to? Yeah, right and now, we're right. Yeah, Go ahead. Good question. Uh, and I'm sorry, I cut you off. What else? No, no, uh, so we use no, AML no. labs right now. Uh, that they have. What, and the reason we use AML labs is that it's because it, you know, it uh, we have an API with them, so that the information goes directly into um, our database from their lab. That's where we're starting. Um, we also have some Dunwoody labs in it, and we're we're also working with other labs as we move um, forward to do it. I um, mean, if you're familiar with programming, to you, to, it's quite a project to be able to do any lab, you know. But we're working towards that. Is you know, really creating a, a, a situation where, hey, if you want to send the lab core, send the lab core. You want to send the quest, you send the quest. You know, uh, but that's not there yet. So right now we use AML Labs. Uh, they've got great service. Um, you know, we've been real happy with what uh, you know. I use it in my practice, so, I, so I'm real happy with what they're doing for me. And those labs populate directly into the report, is that right? Exactly. That's exactly right. Okay, great. Okay, are there any more questions? It looks like that's it on the questions. Okay. All right. Well, thank you, everyone, for coming tonight. Yes, thank you Wonderful. for your time and your attention, and we look forward to working with you. Good night, everyone.